There is a clear path to a sustainable energy earth. It doesn't require destroying uh, natural habitats. Uh, it doesn't uh, require us to be austere and stop using electricity and sort of be in the cold or anything. There is a clear path to a fully sustainable earth uh, with abundance. In fact, you could support a civilization much bigger than Earth, than, than much more than the, the 8 billion humans, uh, could actually be supported sustainably on Earth. And I'm, I'm just often shocked and surprised by how few people realize this. Most of the smart people I know actually don't see a, a, this clear path. They, they think that there's not a path to a sustainable energy future, or at least there's not one that uh, is sustainable at our current population, or that we'd have to resort to extreme measures. None of this is true. If you have a gasoline car, or you're converting less than a third, uh, often maybe only 25% of the energy in the gasoline is converted into motion. The rest is turned into waste heat. That does no, doesn't do any good at all. And there's a lot of energy required even to get the oil out of the ground, to refine the oil, uh, and to transport the gasoline to the gas station. When you look at all that for a typical gasoline car is, is actually going to be using less than 20% fully considered of the uh, energy from the oil actually goes into motion. An electrified civilization versus a combustion civilization. This is not true because most of the energy of combustion is waste heat. And even to get the fuel to combust in the first place and get it to the end use, there's a lot lost along the way. But the nice thing about an electrified economy, through end use efficiency and through efficiency along every step of the way, actually the total energy use it halves. So this is one of the most enabling aspects of electrifying everything, uh, is that the sustainable energy economy is that much easier to accomplish. It's actually half the problem statement of the fossil fuel economy. We're, we're trying to have assumptions that are reasonable, not overly optimistic, in fact, slightly pessimistic. It's really better than half, but just say for, it's, it's, it's easy to make the argument that we need half as much energy with an electric economy versus a, a combustion economy. The thing that is needed in, at very large scale that is not currently present is a vast amount of battery energy storage. Our rough calculations are that this is about 240 terawatt hours, or 240,000 gigawatt hours. This is a lot of batteries, but it is actually a very achievable amount. Uh, that's a combination of electric vehicles and stationary storage. Our actual capital expenditure calculation for manufacturing investment is more like uh, six trillion, but we, you know, we made it higher to make it 10 trillion. And this um, is across mining, refining, you know, battery factories, recycling, vehicle factories, all the things that we're gonna talk about needing to invest in to build the sustainable energy economy. If you look at the total world economy, it's just under 100 trillion. So if this was spread out, say over 10 years, it would be 1% of the global economy. Over 20 years, uh, it would be half a percent Very of doable. the global economy. So this is not a big number relative to the global economy. In terms of wind and solar, how much land would be used? It's less than 0.2% of the land area of Earth. Generally, people don't realize quite how much energy is reaching us from the sun. It's roughly a gigawatt per square kilometer. You know, the sun doesn't shine all the time, but it's, uh, if you multiply that by four to get the continuous power, that gives you the land area of solar. And you can put wind and solar often in the same place. So a lot of places that currently have wind, you could have solar there and you double your energy. You can also put wind offshore. It doesn't even need to yeah. be on land, so wind is even more flexible. You could put solar offshore too. In the end, we should be um, mining less ore to accomplish this economy than we currently do with the fossil fuel economy. The electrified economy will require less mining than the current economy does. Yes. Less, not more. At the time, I think the, the ratio was that 26 out of 12, 27 new companies failed. It would really be meaningful to me and something that I would really have a lot of passion for and about. And uh, 